Gorilla Com going 10-8. What's up guys? I'm in the process of updating my optics here. Main Prepper has a video on this particular uh, optics here and he goes into really deep details, uh, the ins and out, everything you need to know about this particular optics here. So I'm not going to go into that. But these are my original binoculars that I have forever. But the only difference between the binoculars that he is showcasing on his video and this one is this one has the, the uh, mill dot rectangle on the cover it has the formula for figuring out the range of an object or the size of an object we'll get in, a little bit into that later on but uh, this has been my workhorse forever the quality of this was superb and is bulletproof uh, this particular version here also has the uh, anti-laser glass coating on the objective lens here it's kinda like that greenish tint that you see there but I have upgraded from this binocular here I'm switching over to this pair of Steiner optics here and this one here is the uh, Steiner tactical series 10 by 42 mil dot reticle model number 6508 uh, on YouTube there is no videos from the standpoint of a user of these binoculars it's mainly videos by people trying to sell it you know firms and stores or whatnot so you don't get much detail just uh, pretty much the, the 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 company line and I'm, I was kinda pissed about that I mean these two items here I mean they've been in the service forever or this one has been and, and there isn't much uh, information about it except for main preppers video but there wasn't nothing for this guy here and I looked high and low to see if there's any reviews or anything out there uh, but I'm gonna see if I could uh, just show you this thing here from a standpoint of a user so some years ago uh, I had a notion of, of going out to the field and hunting hogs or, or whatever mainly hogs because you can hunt them year round I've taken these out to, to hikes and, and all that and it was good and, and everything but uh I left it home more often than I took it out because of the weight. I, I didn't want to lug this thing around. And this thing swing, swinging around my neck, going up and down trails, uh, was a bit uncomfortable. So I just left it home. Even if, even when I brought this sort of like uh, shoulder holster type of uh, harness system here, it, it didn't work. You might as well just get the, the regular strap that it get, came with. But for 10, 10 or 11, 12 years, this thing has been bulletproof. Uh, it's been sat in my truck all these years as well, bouncing around in the cab. And uh, it served me well. So I'm going to retire this. I'm going to move over to the, uh, the new Steiners here. So let's compare the weight between the two. Now this harness adds a little bit of weight here. And I'm just going to put that aside. But the binoculars themselves with the dust cover is two pounds and 16 ounces almost almost three pounds uh, with the harness it would be you'll be lugging three pounds worth of binoculars alone my new Steiners with the strap weighs in at one pound fif 15 ounces so a little bit over a pound less than this pair right here if you line them up from the uh, eyepiece over to the front is almost the same length this way but as you can see this is a poro prism uh, method and this is the roof prism method and, and of course like I said apples to oranges and I'm not going to go into the details but this is a much smaller compact uh, binocular than, than this guy right here and this has uh, two extra power than this this is or three rather this is a seven magnific magnification uh, setting and this is uh, 10. I've been eyeballing this pair here for at least two three years and when I n first noticed this particular model come out uh, it, it cost $850 or 870 something like that totally out of my league and I paid somewhat around 350 to 400 for this pair used 
So even if I sold this pair here, uh, I would still pay a little bit over 400 for for this one on top of that, even with the, even with the difference. So this was out of my league, and and I didn't even bother looking at it until recently. And when I seen the price go down considerably, uh, I got this from Sportsman Guide for four hundred and fifty dollars, roughly. If you join their club, then you get the club pricing for it. But it you get you get pretty good deals if you're a club member for other items. And uh, right now, this is for sale. And by the time you see this video, this will be sold. So I first got my exposure to to the Steiner binoculars in the service, and at that time, even now, uh, I've been used to the the, the cheap old uh, binoculars, you know, like Tasco or some other brand. And if you look through those binoculars and scopes, like uh, this one here, this is a Leopold scope. If you compare those lower grade uh, optics with medium grade to high end uh, optics and, and I consider this somewhat a little bit over medium grade I mean your Zeiss and Swarovski's are are insanely priced in, in the two three grand arena there and, and, and that's not practical for me not at all but for a little bit above average and name recognition or brand recognition in my my case I, I stuck with Steiner's here and Leopold uh, once you look through those glass it there's no comparison and you don't want to go back to to Tasco or, or any other lower grade binoculars because there, there is no so the main reason why I got the Steiner uh, this particular Steiner here with the mill dot reticle is to, to range items out in the field while looking through the glass and and you got your crosshair here with with the mill dot reticle on it and and I'll show you uh, 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 what that looks like because I didn't want to use a range finder or anything like that I wanted to do it the uh, old-fashioned way just you know doing the math and and not depend on electronics to find a range of something and I thought this was pretty pretty nice that that they have that reticle built into to one of the one objective of lens here this model here also has that also has that reticle but they call it the Sumar reticle the Steiner universal mill dot reticle and, the, and it has a little bit more lines and 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 detail than this model here so this one would be a bit more accurate in your estimation of range of an item and plus I get Two, three more uh, powers of magnification with the 10 by 42s than the 7 by uh, 50s here though you get a little bit more light coming into your eyeball with this one so this is pretty good for for dusk and dawn sort of uh, scanning the, the the area but there is a compromise here and, and I don't mind this at all this I, I couldn't tell the difference between the, the light uh, that that's being projected into your eyeball as a matter of fact I think the uh, laser coating on this laser protective coating on on the glass on this is acting like a uh, sunglass because it is a, a little bit darker to look at items than this binocular here this has the multi coating on the objectives but uh, but it's not filtering like game where where only the browns and the tans and that type of color will pop out of the vegetation in the background for like hunting and some of uh, Steiner's other models they, they have that this here you'll you'll see everything in an even spectrum where where there is no filtering of of colors out there so you'll get the true color of what you're looking at which is what I want as well because I do want to see the green and, and not it be you know uh, camouflage in the backgrounds so as an example of using a mill dot uh, ranging reticle there the mill dot reticle to to estimate range of an object uh, in this clip here you'll see a lighthouse and I'm sorry for the shakiness uh, I'm somewhat far away from this uh, fire lookout and, and I was trying to steady the uh, the glass there but the average size of a fire lookout is from 12 to 20 feet uh, 20 feet wide 
So I took an average of that and I said 15 feet. Converted that to meters because the, uh, the metric system is a little bit easier to do the math. So that came out to 4.57 meters and the formula annotated on the screen there is the formula for, for ranging using this reticle here. So it's 4.57 meters times a thousand divided by one mil. That is the actual measurement I took with the mil dot uh, reticle here. It was one mil across. So plugging in that, that, that formula, the, the range came out to be 4.57 kil kilometers. So using a GPS and, and uh, topographical map uh, software, I found out that the actual distance was 5.51 kilometers. So I was off by one kilometer. But for just eyeballing it, that that's pretty good still. I'm sure if the if the object was closer, let's say uh, a hog, and and you could range it that way, you could get more accurate uh, readings that way. So you could you know plug in the, your your sights to to where you you'll have the correct range or your correct dope to to shoot at that particular game effectively. The actual size of that fire lookout was actually 18 feet wide. Now that I know the actual distance from my location where I took this footage to the fire lookout, uh, I just redid the math there, converted it to meters, and found out that the actual size of that particular uh, structure is 18 feet wide. You could know the size, locate uh, the range, and all sorts of other information just by using this particular reticle here which is what I wanted. So the Steiners have these uh, attached dust covers for the objective lens and they fit over the uh, objective lens this way and that has proven to be really good and, and I never had one of these kind of flop off on its own or anything. You actually have to uh, give it a little bit of effort to take the uh, eye cups off. Well on the new Steiners here they don't fit over the uh, objective lens. It actually fits inside the uh, objective lens, kind of uh, on the reverse there. And they come off a little bit easier than these guys here. Uh, I, I hope or wish that Steiner has something that, that could replace this where it'll go over it. And that's one change I would like to see. So yeah, that's one thing I don't like about this, but it, it'll do. The second thing I don't like about these binoculars is uh, they have these uh, bat wings here. These guys right here, as, as you could fold them back so if you have glasses or whatever you could use them, use them with glasses or, or if you don't want to use this so you can have your peripheral vision in play then yeah you could fold them backwards. But uh, I prefer the old Steiner's eye cups here. I prefer this much better than the uh, Batman uh, ears here. And these you could fold back so you, if you have glasses you can use these as well. There when you set your both these adjustments you could adjust your the sights individually per your eye because you know some some people their eyes are not the same. Uh, so and also you could you could see that there's a zero here. You could actually loosen up the uh, nut here that holds the eyepiece together and actually loosen that to where once you get your your zero or, or the sights to where they conform to your eyes, you could loosen that up and and set your zero there and that'll be the setting for your particular use. This pair doesn't have that what they do have is like these uh, arrows there. You got a narrow there, an arrow there, and these are the settings that conform to my eyes. Now there's a big difference that, that Steiner doesn't really make clear is that uh, on the non reticle binoculars you could adjust both these individually as you look at an object 20 meters away or so, but since one of these tubes here have the reticle, the, the uh, mill dot reticle, 
you have to focus in on the reticle. You're just forced to, f to focus in on that. And then that's like your base or your reference point to adjust everything else. So then you'll look at this eye here and adjust the ocular portion of that to be in focus with your uh, reticle here. This is the same way. You have to focus in on your reticle eye because the, the, uh, the reticle is only on one tube. So you focus in on the reticle. Then after that, you focus in your other eye in conjunction with the middle adjustment there, focus here. The, these Steiners here do, does not have that center focus. I mean, it's just once you set these two ocular, you can see an object from 15 meters onto infinity without having to focus. On these here, uh, yeah, you can see something 20 feet in front of you, but then if you look at distance, then you would have to use uh, adjust for focus on here back and forth. But it, it's really smooth and, and not much play to get your focus in there. So acquisitioning targets would be uh, fast, still fast and 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 just just an extra step over the old Steiners over here. The, the new Steiners here, they come with uh, this Neoprene cover here to cover up your bat ears. Uh, neoprene strap, neck strap there. And that's about it. And it comes with this case here. And it's just a nylon cheap case. Not, nothing special about that. The only thing I don't like is uh, they only have one pocket for this here. I would like to see the main pocket for the binoculars and maybe a little a little side pocket or, or back pocket there to f to put in your accessories like uh, cleaning cloth and whatnot. But uh, yeah, these guys don't have it. But I'm not going to use this at all. I'm just going to put this in my backpack and uh, go just like that. All in all, I like this particular binoculars here by Steiner. Again, it's the Steiner Tactical 10 by 42 mill dot reticle and I, I hate getting sort of tactical stuff or things with tactical looks or anything like that but in this case this was an excep exception because I wanted the uh, mill dot reticle on, on this particular pair here so in the other mo only model that they offer is the, uh, the tactical police version of their binoculars with that particular feature and here's a nice looking pair of binoculars here These are pretty light I could uh, hold this up onto my eye offhand longer than I did the other ones after a while you get a little bit of fatigue and you know it'll start to shake these are you, you can hold these forever pretty much uh, the small and compact for me this is more like a mid size binoculars uh, crystal clear glass I mean like I said between a budget binoculars and premium binoculars I mean there is no comparison whatsoever uh, one other f thing that I failed to mention was uh, you get a little bit more of uh, problems with parallax and parallax the way I understand it is if, if you look down the uh, the tube here uh, you get somewhat of a ghosting ring around if you don't hold it just right to your eye and the other Steiners, the uh, Polaro Prism Steiners that, that, that you've seen before, uh, has less parallax than this pair here. And I think it has to do with, with more of the uh, magnifications, but I'm not an optics uh, expert, so I don't know. I just know it, it, that I have to sort of hold these a little bit more steadier so I can get a, a, you know, a, a good, clear, f full field of view rubber armoring all over this is made out of metal I believe the whole thing is not a polycarbonate uh, don't quote me on that I'm not sure so uh, do your own research uh, the tube is uh, air purged and filled with nitrogen so it prevents uh, fogging and all that other good stuff moisture within the the uh, binoculars themselves I think that's pretty much it as far as the details 
but I am totally happy with this pair here and I don't mind lugging this with me onto the trail or camping or any other activity as much as, as I did the, the other one, uh, the heavier pair of binoculars. So this was a good upgrade for me and uh, I'm pretty happy with this purchase here. Well guys, here's an update. I just sold this pair of Steiners and <clears throat> something like 10 plus years ago, I paid something like $420 for this pair. I was 10 plus years ago. I just sold this pair for $417. It retains its value very well if you take care of them. So that's that's another reason to kind of upgrade in your in your binoculars or whatnot, get good quality because the resale value would be uh, pretty good. This pair of Steiners I brought for $449. The sale of this binocular offset the cost of this guy here and I paid $32 total for this. Not a bad deal. As, and especially if I'm getting away from the heavier, bulkier stuff into a lightweight binoculars with the same rectangle and the features that I wanted. And I like this better than I do the, these. Girly Gate going 10, 10.